Good afternoon, good afternoon, everyone. Hope all is well. Hope everyone's doing all right. As always, we'll wait a few seconds to make sure everybody's connected and then we'll get started. All right, looks like we are good. So once again, good afternoon. Hope everybody's great. Hope everybody's ready to get this uh, weekend going. You know, we only have a Monday, Wednesday class. So we're looking at uh, the uses of percentages and statistics. We covered 2122 um, last time. Yep, 2122 last time. So we're looking at 23 today. We're starting off with percent and what percent means. We're going to break up the word. It's percent, cent, uh, means 100. Notice the prefix for 100, like century, 100 years. So that means per 100. And per mathematically is division. So that percent symbol is the same thing as 1 over 100, 1 divided by 100. And decimal wise, that would be 0 0.01. All right. So we look at four different ways of converting uh, two percentages or away from percentages. Uh, the first one, you know, we have people coming in, so I'm giving give them a chance to get that title. Uh, but the first one is converting decimals to percents. All right, so So converting decimals to percents. First thing we'll do is locate the decimal. Then we can move our decimal two places to the right, and then we'll place our percent sign. All right, so we have three examples here. 0.25, we're gonna take that decimal, move it two places to the right, and then place the percent sign, which will give us 25%. 1.8, there's only one value to the right of that decimal. So we're gonna still move the decimal two places to the right, but then we will use a zero as a placeholder. So that would be 180%. And then for the number seven, when you don't see a decimal at all, they assume you know it's to the right of the rightmost digit. So it means it'll be to the right of that seven. Moving the two places to the right, we will need to use two zeros as placeholders, and that would be 700%. <clears throat> Questions on moving decimals or converting decimals to percents. Always be two places to the Always two places, yeah. Mm -hmm. So percents to decimals, very similar to uh, what we just finished dis discussing, but it's going in the other direction, really do what we did in reverse. 
So this time we're gonna move our decimal two places to the left and remove the percent sign. Everybody holding on to the green. All right. All right, so looking at 37%, get our decimal and move it two places to the left. That's just gonna be 0.37. All right. So here, just you know, someone had asked that decimal to that zero to the left is not necessarily uh, it's not necessary. You don't necessarily have to have it. So zero point three seven and point three seven are the same thing. Um, so somebody asked about it, so that's where that came from. But zero point three seven and point three seven are the same thing. Two point nine percent. Once again, same process. Point. Uh, take the decimal. Excuse me. Move it two places to the left. There's only one value to the left, which is that two. So we need a zero as a placeholder. So that's what happened right here. So it's 0 0.029. And then last one, 0.06%. Move your decimal two places to the left. That's 0 0.006. All right, anybody holding on to black? All right, next one, percents to fractions. We're gonna replace the percent sign with one over 100, remember what I mentioned? In the beginning, the percent is one of the ways of representing that percent sign, one over 100, and then we're gonna multiply and simplify if possible. All right. First example, we have 56%. So we're gonna take that percent sign and replace it with one over 100. We have 56%. Once again, take the percent sign, replace it with one over 100. 56 as a fraction is 56 over one. And all we did was multiply across. So 56 times one is 56, one times 100 is 100. So that's how we got here. 56 over 100. Then from there, we want to simplify if possible. So I broke up 56 and 100. 56 is 4 times 14. 100 is 4 times 25. The 4 is cancel. And that leaves you with 14 over 25. Any problems before we go to the next one? All right, same process. We have 125%. And we need to replace that percent with one over 100. Then multiply across. We have 125 over 100. From there, you establish what they have in common, if they have anything in common, as far as the top and bottom, top number, bottom number is concerned. 
25 times five is 125, 25 times four is 100. 25 is canceled, leaving me with five over four as a fraction. All right. It's the last one like this. You may not even see one like this, but uh, it's worth talking about. Um, if you have 0.4%, you have a decimal as a percentage, and you want to convert that to a fraction. So the initial process is the same. You're going to replace the percent with one over 100. But we do need to be careful here because if we have a legit fraction, you cannot have a decimal involved. So I need to get rid of the decimal. So if I multiply 10 times 0.4, that's the four is in the tenths place, so you multiply by 10. Um, but it's uh, 0.4 times 10, we'll get rid of the decimal. You should just be left with four. But when it comes to fractions, in order to keep your equivalency, whatever you do to the top, you have to do to the bottom and vice versa. So that's why I multiply both top and bottom by 10. So now 0.4 times 10 is 4, 100 times 10 is 1,000. So that's how we have 4 or 1,000 right here. And then once again, you want to examine both numbers to see if anything can be reduced or canceled out. 4 is 4, of course, but 1,000 is 4 times 250. So those 4s cancel, leave you with just a 1 in the numerator. Bottom, you have 250. Any questions, any questions? All right. Last one, last type of conversion, I should say. We want a fraction 2%. So you convert your fraction to decimal by division and then convert the decimal 2%. All right, so if I have three over five, three over five is the same thing as three divided by five. So you can throw it in your calculator to get 0. 0.6. And then convert that decimal to a percentage like we talked about previously. You just move your decimal two places to the right and place your percent sign, so it's 60%. Any questions before we look at this next one? All right, so we have two and one fourth. One fourth or one divided by four is 0.25. So two and one fourth is the same thing as 2.25. So then to convert that to a percentage, you move your decimal two places to the right, place your percent sign, and that'll be 225%, 225%.
All right, any questions? Very good. All right, so in this section, they talk about absolute and relative change and absolute and relative difference. So just uh, work with a statement here that absolute relative change, absolute and relative change and absolute and relative difference are calculated the same way as the absolute relative error. We did that last section. So I have an example, just you know, walking through the process again, but they, all three of them are calculated the same way. Excuse me. All right. I don't know if I go up too far. So I'm not oh, there we go. That's the end of the example. So, our example estimated world population in 1950 was 2.6 billion. By the end of 2015, it had reached 7.3 billion. Describe the absolute and relative changes in world population from All right, scrolling up. So we have calculated absolute change by taking our new value and then subtracting the reference value from it or the old value from it. So in 1950, we had 2.6 billion. In 2015, we had 7.3 billion. So 2015, 2015's uh, count is our new value. And then the reference value, the old value is at 2.6 billion. So the absolute change is 4.6 billion. 7.3 minus 2.6. And then the relative change will be the absolute change divided by the reference value. Oh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not finished typing it. You said hurry up and, and go go up real quick. Yeah, yeah. Mean or not? All right, let me know when you finish. All right, my scroll up some. How are we looking? Let me know where to stop. So, our relative change, we take our absolute change divided by the reference value, which is the old value, then multiply it times 100%. So like I said, just like when we found the absolute error and the relative error, 4.6 divided by 2.6 times 100. We're right done with the black. All right. 
So 4.6 divided by 2.6 will leave you 1.80769. Math lab, of course, will let you know how many decimal how many decimal places it's around. And so um, once you multiply it times 100, that'll put you at 180.8 if they tell you to go to the tenth place of your percentage. All right, any questions on any of that? Anybody still using red? Okay. So then we have our final statement according to our calculations. World population increased by 4.7 billion people or by about 181% during the 65 year period. All right, can we go to the next thing? Anybody still holding on? Any questions on anything? That's it for chapter two. All right, I just remembered something I need to post for you guys. I'll put it in my list. All right, so all right, any questions before we look at uh, three one three three one is uh, relatively short, just talking about frequency tables, just show you how to set that up. Uh, you good to go to the next page or let's straight. All right, appreciate it. Okay. So three point one, all they talk about is uh, frequency tables and how to set them up and take care of them and everything, everything like that. So um, a good way to display data is using your frequency tables. And uh, frequency table will start with two columns. First one is categories. And then the second one is your frequency. And that's just the number of values in that category. The next two columns um, are going to be you know, light calculations, but calculations, calculations nonetheless. The relative frequency will be calculated by the frequency and category 
divided by the total total number of values that you have. And then for the fourth column, you have your cumulative frequency. And that's the number of data values in that category and all of the preceding categories. All right, so right there, can I scroll up? All right, let me erase these slashes. All right, so we're gonna consider the following 20 scores on a 100 point exam. And we're gonna construct a frequency table. So these 20 scores aren't in any specific order or anything like that. They're just listed and we're gonna use them to construct a frequency table. Mm -hmm. So we have 76, 80, 78, 76, 94, 75, 98, 77, 84, 88. Hopefully you can see the contrast between my nines and fours. Uh, 81, 72, 91, 72, 74, 86, 79, 88, 72, 75. All right, so first thing we're gonna do, because we have this wide range of values going from you know, 72, yep, 72 to 98. Oh, no, that's not okay. 72 to 98, uh, we're gonna create bins. Bins are just the range of values for your, uh, for your data. Uh, it's only if needed, sometimes you won't need it. If you just have a series of ones, you know, twos, threes, fours, fives, and there's all of my ones, two, three, four, and fives, then you wouldn't need bins. You just write down how many ones do you have, how many twos do you have, how many threes, how many fours. But we have a different range of numbers and it goes from 72 to 98. And so they say a book says a five point bin is a good setup for these values.
so what I do, I want to erase these, we're going to walk through it. I'll put them back in a second. But so is anybody still copying green? Okay. So we go, went from 72 to 98. No. Right I didn't uh, I didn't get the whole thing. All right. How far you need? Seeing this okay. All right, are we good to go now? All right, hold on one second. All right, so 95 to 99, uh, we're talking about five, notice that's 95, 96, 97, 98, 99. So that's your five digits. So you're not going all the way to 100. That's your five values. Then you just keep on with the same pattern, pattern going from 90 to 94, 85, 89, 80, 84, 75 to 79, and then 70 to 74. And we're just trying to make sure we have a place for all of our values. You look from the smallest to your largest, 72 to 98 is uh, what we're looking to encompass. All right. Then from there, then from there, we go back to our data uh, chart or data values and see how many data values fit into each one of these categories. So that's your frequency. So looking at 95 to 99, if you go up here and look, there's only one value that fits there, and that's 98. So that's why there's a one here. Then 90 to 94. There were 94, 91, so there's two. And you just keep on the same pattern. And if you follow that, you will get these numbers. There are three values that fit into this category, three here. Seven numbers fit into this range of 75 to 79, and then four values fit into that last range or last bin. I don't know why I switched from the two. All right, questions on the first two columns. And of course, there are 20 values, you know, uh, where those, yeah, right here. So 20 values, so all of these should add up to 20. If they do not, then somewhere, somewhere somebody went wrong. Either you wrote down too many values, um, or didn't count them all, right, or whatever the case would be, but this column should add up to 20. Questions before we go to the next one. All right, can we just kind of scroll up? I want to do it. Somebody still copying me? All right, so now the next two columns is continuation. I didn't want to just squeeze stuff in there, and I had an error almost erased it by mistake. So just the next two columns. And so each one of these numbers right here, you're gonna place them over 20. Mm 
All right, so that's what we have right there. So one over 20 is 0 0.05. And this is your relative frequency. That's the third column. One over 20 is 0 0.05. Two over 20.1. Three over 20.15. Got three over 20 again. So of course, that would be 0.15 again. Seven over 20 is 0.35. And four over 20 is 0.2. And when you add up these, you should get one. When you add up the relative frequency, it should give you one. Any questions on relative frequency? So the way MathLab will more than likely have it set up, they'll give you a chart and then have boxes for you to put your answers in. You know, you just type in the answer. So on the Q, the color, I don't know how to say it. On the mm -hmm. right side, how do you get, does that supposed to match up with the left side? Oh, I ain't got that yet. I'm just waiting, making sure everybody's good with this call. I ain't gonna move too fast. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, about to go there now. So like your uh, classmate just mentioned, looking at Q, which is frequency, which is the last, oh, what's on my pen? Okay, there we go. Which is our last column, our fourth column. So you start off with the one that we had. Then you add the one to the two. So basically you're looking at these, I'll write one, and then one plus two, then one plus two plus three. You just adding up each one, then go to the next one, one plus two plus three. 3 plus 3, then 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 3 plus 7, and then you add up all of them. So you're doing them all and accumulating, you're accumulating your numbers as you go to each row. So that's all we did. We had 1, then 1 plus 2, then 1 plus 2 plus 3, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 3, and then add 7 to that, and then add the 4. So when you get to that last column, it should be 20. You know, because that's how many numbers you had all together. Not last column, last row, excuse me. And in math lab, you probably won't have to put in this. I just did that for board purposes. You probably, all you have to do is just one, put in three, put in six, put in nine into those boxes. You know, but math lab, of course, will guide you and work with what they want. If you were to put in this, they should give you a hint saying we just want a number or something like that. All right, hopefully that answered your question. That's how, how we will do this. If not, feel free to ask again if I need to re-say something. But any questions on any of the columns? Any questions, any questions? So that's all they did in this section. Anybody still copying before I go to one other page to show you guys something? Everybody good before I go on? All right, let me know when you finish. All right, thank you very much. So um, that's the first section in chapter three. Like I said, that's all they talk about in chapter three, one, a section three, one. But I did want to emphasize that uh, between Thursday and Friday, I'm going to post test one. I'll let you know when I, once I put it in there. But remember, I told you about our test will be, you know, coupled together in chapters. So you talk about chapter one, chapter two will be that first test. Majority of it is definitions. You know, we talked about that before, uh, especially coming out of chapter one. But um, yeah, so look for that, and depending on the complexity, if it's all definitions, then there, there's no test review for that because all you're doing is looking at definitions and matching your definitions. But uh, if there are calculations in there, then I will create a test review for you guys to look at. When is that? Wait, wait, wait. So is it when is it due? 
Uh, everything posted in Math Lab is due uh, that December date, whatever it's 12, 2, 12, 9, something like that. It's in Math Lab. Though. I don't know what that. And you said what's on the uh, test again? Um, chapter one, chapter two. Mm -hmm. That's all I said. Was chapter one, chapter two. Yeah, you said like, I heard you said like definitions and what else? Oh, just chapter, there's definitions from chapter one, chapter two. Oh, that's it? I said there may be calculations. Uh, I need. I just need to go and create it and see. Okay. Mm -hmm. But uh, if I said there were calculations, then there will be a test review to, you know, let you know what type of calculations be up there. But if it's all definitions, then I don't do a test review for that because that's just definitions. I mean, that's pretty much just giving you an answer. Right. And mm -hmm. you already have those definitions, you know, at your disposal, so. All right, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Anything else, anybody else? This, like I said, I was just telling you this as a heads up that is, I'm gonna be posting this soon, so. Everybody good? Everybody straight? I want to have to ask a question about uh, what I sent you uh, this morning. Okay. So I, uh, you know, send everybody off and then close out the recording. Then we can talk. All right. So is everybody good before I close out? The rest straight? For the relative frequency, mm -hmm. um, is there a reason why you have to divide it by the total frequency and convert it? Or is it just like a, what comes with the step? It's, it's basically, is taking your number, your frequency, and uh, relating it or making it relative to the total number of values that you have. So that's what it's, re you know, it's relative to the total number of values that you have. So, okay, so like if we have a test on it, we would have to convert it over to a decimal and then do the calculations on the right side for the cumulative? Yes, yep, those are two separate calculations, yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yep, no problem, no problem. And so uh, for anybody, you know, just making sure we're clear, that's just taking each one of these numbers and placing them over the total number of data bags that you have. So you're just comparing it to that, that total. Yeah. All right, so if you guys are good, I'm good. Have a great weekend, be safe. And um, I will see you on Monday. Oh, no, no, not Monday, because it's a holiday. I'll see you on Wednesday. All right, you guys take care.